Hi everyone. So now we'll talk about in today's lecture about the facilitatory and the inhibitory techniques, which is frequently we are using in the rehabilitation program. So let's start with this. So the rehabilitation can be divided into two categories that can be either facilitatory or inhibitory. For using both the techniques, the first and foremost important thing is we need a sensory input. Right. Without sensory input, there can not be any response. That is, there cannot be any motor response. So, we need a sensory input, and depending on the that sensory input, either we can get a sense uh, facilitatory response or we can get an inhibitory response. So, the main objectives include the enhancement of sensory integration, normalization of tone, integration of primitive reflex, and facilitation of higher level reflex that are normal reflexes. Fourth is normalization of movement and fifth is development of coordination. So uh, in the approaches we are using for rehabilitation, they are the uh, these are the techniques which were given by the rule, which were given some of the techniques were given by the Bobat. So we are combinedly using all those approaches together in the in this lecture. If we take if we talk about normalization of tone, then there are certain uh, stimuli which will eventually normalize the abnormal tone. If we talk about integration of primitive reflex and facilitation of higher high level reflex, so in this we are inhibiting the primitive reflex and we are facilitating with the key points of control. We are facilitating the normal moment. So this is the concept based on the Bobat. Right. So different scientists have a uh, different physical therapists, different researchers have given different techniques, and so combinedly we'll talk about all the techniques. So the common techniques are proprioceptive stimulation technique, extraceptive stimulation technique, vestibular stimulation technique, spatial senses that is vision, hearing, smell, and taste, and the last will be the multi-sensory stimulation techniques. Means all the sensory techniques we will combine in this. So the quick stretch, starting with the quick, quick stretch. In this, the brief stretch is applied to the muscle. It will either facilitate or enhances the agonist muscle contraction and give reciprocal innervation effect. It mediates its action with the help of type 1A afferent fibers of the muscle spindle. Quick stretch or tapping over the muscle belly or tendon is the example of this. So whenever we apply a brief stretch, it will lead to reciprocal innervation, right? So if I apply a quick stretch to biceps, then it will reciprocally innervate the triceps. So if I want to increase the control of triceps, that is the extension of the elbow, I will apply a quick stretch to the biceps. That is the main logic behind this. Prolong and firm stretch. Here, the maintained stretch in the lengthened position it increases the threshold of the muscle spindles and give reciprocal inhibition effect. So if, again I will give that example of elbow extension, if I want to increase the elbow extension, then I will give sustained stretch to elbow flexors, that is the biceps. This sustained stretch gives reciprocal inhibition, right? And that's how uh, it will give to, right? So positioning, inhibitory splinting or casting, these are the example of this. Then comes the resistance. Here, it facilitates the muscle contraction by reciprocal innervation and the things which will use to provide resistance can be manual resistance, weights or gravity. Light manual resistance is used to facilitate and accommodate very weak muscle. Then comes the approximation and joint traction. In approximation, there is a compression of joint surfaces. It activates the joint receptors that are type 1. And the main part for approximation is it always increases the postural extensor control. That is, it always facilitates the stability component of the body. That So, it facilitates the postural extensors and stabilizing responses and enhances the joint awareness. Example can be manual joint compression with the help of belt or vest or bouncing while on space ball. So in Parkinson's patient what we are going or uh, the bouncing action for the uh, trunk control it is nothing but it is the approximation of the spine which leads to control of the spinal extensors and it helps the Parkinson's patient to hold the body in upright position. 
Next is the joint traction. Here, the traction it is just contradict to the approximation. Approximation increases the proportional control, while traction increases the range of motion. That is, it facilitates the flexion activities. It activates the joint receptors type two. It facilitates the joint motion and manual distraction is the example. Inhibitory pressure. Deep manual maintain pressure across the longitudinal axis of the tendons with prolonged positioning in the lantern range. It is the it is usually given on the muscles which are actively hyperactive means on the elbow ex, uh, flexors we can give on the pronators we can give if there is a severe spasticity and severe pronation it is uh, having a severe hand is in pronated position then we can apply a pressure at the lateral epicondyle sustain pressure and we can with this sustain pressure it will inhibit the hyperactive muscle right uh, it activates both the muscle and tactile receptors. It inhibition dampens the muscle tone. Firm maintain pressure applied manually or with the positioning, and it can be combined with the other relaxation techniques. Then comes the other techniques are the manual contact. In this, firm deep pressure of hand in contact with the body. It activates the muscle as well as the proprioceptor facilitates the contraction directly under the hand and it provides the sensory awareness right so manual contact is also a major principle of proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation technique because it provides a far more sensory awareness to the body next is the light moving touch it activates the low threshold head head and organ and free nerve endings and is mediated by type a delta sensory fiber it is usually for the protection and alerting response and it responsible for the protective withdrawal applied with a fingertip or a camel brush for 3 to 5 strokes and allow 30 seconds of rest between the strokes to prevent overstimulation so we are avoiding the temporal summation it increases the corticosteroid level in the bloodstream and it facilitates the superficial mobilizing muscles right neutral warmth it is for the retention of body heat it stimulates the thermoreceptors of the hypothalamus and it activates the parasympathetic responses. Generalized inhibition of tone, calming effect, pain reduction and it is usually done with the wrapping of body parts or a, uh, with the towel or a wraps for 15 to 20 minutes. It is used to treat hypertonia, spasticity, rigidity and attention deficits. As a warmth component, it is always also it is like a thermoregulatory component so it is linked with the hypothalamus and limbic system and that's how they help in controlling the attention deficits usually in autism in adsd we are using this neutral warmth as a major rehabilitation program then comes the icing we'll go for quick icing in cases of hypotonia it activates the more myelinated type a delta fiber causing a withdrawal response 2 to 3 seconds is enough and it gives facilitatory effect right now then comes a prolonged icing which leads to inhibition of muscle tone and painful muscle spasm it promotes reciprocal pattern between diaphragm and abdominal muscle and hence forth is it it is very useful for respiratory rate control increases the breathing pattern voice production and general vitality Immersion in the cold water, ice chips, ice towel or wraps or ice massage are the examples of this. So in icing there are two types of icing. First will be the quick icing and next will be the slow icing. For the quick icing we will go for hypotonia so it stimulates the muscle. Prolonged icing it is it is relax the muscle and it is used to in cases of hypertonia. Then comes is vestibular stimulation. So, in slow vestibular st stimulation, it is a slow intensity rhythmic vestibular stimulation. It primarily activates the otolith organs, which are the tonic receptors, and it produces generalized relaxation, inhibition, or dampening of tone. Slow repetitive rolling or rocking movement are examples. We can also use rocking chair, therapy ball swing, or hammock, and it is used for hypertonic as well as hyperactive patients. So, vestibular stimulation will help for calming and generalized relaxation. 
Vestibular stimulation via head and body movement. It activates the anti-gravity muscles and their antagonists before the stretch of the muscle spindle. It helps for postural and tonal adjustment and also for the head and eye movement. Change of position or movements. Spinning in chair, wobble board, therapy ball, etc. These are the example of this. And it is usually for hypotonic patients like Down syndrome in which we need a postural or anti-gravity muscles to develop their motor control. And in patients with a sensory integrative dysfunction because these patients also like the postural control. And in the patients of coordination problems. We can also use the stimulation techniques in cerebellar ataxic patients. This is the first part of this lecture. I hope you all understand and thank you.